Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Zorowski, and in efforts to keep you healthy when everyone else around you is sick, we're going to talk about NAC. You may have heard people refer to NAC as NAC or even N-acetylcysteine. It's all the same thing. We're going to look at the crucial role it plays in preventing and also treating the virus. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski, and welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. For all my natural health videos, go to www.drz.tv, and there you also be can become a exclusive member and get exclusive content where we put a lot of effort in giving you information to help you stay healthy year round. There's exclusive member videos, there's downloads, all kinds of great things that will help you transform your health. And it also supports the making of content just like this. So go to drz.tv and become a member today. And the link is in the description below. Now, as we look at this N-acetylcysteine, it's a precursor to glutathione, which appears to play a crucial role in reducing the severity of COVID-19. And in this article, one of the you know studies we're looking at, it basically says, hey, look, it's very good at not only uh, preventing, but also it should be as a standard of care using this when it comes to treating the virus issue. Now, it talks highly in this article about how it promotes glutathione in the body. It's a precursor to glutathione. And a lot of people don't know what glutathione is. I actually, actually recently had somebody say to me, glutathione is dangerous. You wouldn't want to take that. And I go, no, glutathione is actually excellent. Glutathione helps reduce oxidative stress. It helps reduce free radicals in the body, which in turn is going to help reduce disease, right? Whether it's heart disease, cancer, diabetes, it's going to reduce your risk if you're you know, having adequate amounts of glutathione in the body, this powerful antioxidant. It reduces cell damage in the liver. So if you're somebody who has alcoholic fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver, if you have liver toxicity, it's going to help in all of those ways. Very good for your liver health. It helps with decreasing insulin resistance in the body, and almost everybody has insulin resistance to a certain extent. And you could only imagine how much more sick you're going to be if you get a viral infection and you have insulin resistance. So my goodness, this is going to be powerful for you. It's going to help increase circulation in the arteries, decrease autoimmune diseases like celiacs or even arthritis, and then decrease respiratory conditions as well. So having adequate amounts of glutathione in the body is very, very powerful. Now in this article, they go on to talk about how there's a study, and I think this study is very interesting and is important. There's a study that found that it, NAC reduces viral, viral replication of certain viruses, including the influenza virus, okay? Now, you can probably tell my voice is a little bit raspy. I actually had the influenza virus. And this study about the influenza was very interesting because they showed that the number needed to treat was 0.5 which means for every two people treated with NAC, one would be protected against symptomatic influenza. That's significantly, this is where it gets really crazy and awesome, that's significantly better than the influenza vaccine, which had a number needed to vaccinate of 71, meaning 71 people must be vaccinated to prevent one single case of confirmed influenza, which it's even better than vitamin D, which was 33, number needed to treat was 33 to prevent one case of influenza. So that's interesting. And you know, when you look at the influenza, it comes around every year and then most people go and they get the shot, right? They get the flu shot. The flu shot at best is typically somewhere like 30, 40% accurate, you know, because what they do is they just take a, a guess, their best guess at what strain will be out there every single year and they make the shots accordingly. That strain is constantly changing, so it is a guess. So you're only getting a certain percentage of accuracy and even with that, you know, it's like you're finding that vitamin D works better, NAC works better. Like I can't for the life of me understand why people line up and get this thing. I mean, you can tell how many people get brainwashed by both pharmaceutical companies and the corporate media to get this stuff. And the corporate media is involved because the, the pharma companies fund them um, in, in significant ways. So that's why they're constantly pushing these things. But when you look at studies around the world, like the Cochrane Review Group over in Europe, they said this they, they said the flu shot was complete rubbish. So they didn't find any use for it. So you're seeing that NAC 
is good at prevention and also vitamin D. And then of course, most people don't do either of those and they go and get the flu shot. Now, um, as we go down here, basically one of the things they talk about is how NEC really inhibits, inhibits the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now, one of the things that you've heard with COVID, for instance, is that these cytokines such as interleukin-6 and interleukin-10 and TNF-alpha, they get elevated. And then when they reach a level that's excessive, you get this cytokine storm, this storm of inflammation that goes to the lungs and causes tissue damage. Well, NAC is able to go in and support the inhibition of that cascade, which is going to be very protective. And so they talk highly about how you can use something like NAC to reduce inflammation. And here they're specifically talking about how you can even use an IV of it. Now, a lot of people say, well, look, I don't have access to an IV. You do have access to NAC in supplementation form. And there's even going to be people who will say in the comments, because I get this all the time, look, you can't get NAC. I'm going to put a link in the description below to the source where I of NAC that I use personally, that I use in my clinic. And this NAC works well. I mean, we're looking at all the different research here. And uh, as we look to NAC, it has been difficult to get because people who know the research are buying up tons of it. The FDA came after it and has um, very much um, uh tried to pull it off the shelves and has successfully pulled it off the shelves of many major, major retailers. And so it's difficult to get these days. So I'll put a link in the description below. If it's available, um, I recommend that you have this kind of thing on hand. Um, and I say if it's available because I know that it even sells out um, on, uh, on our end and the source that I use as well. So going down through this article right here, we can see that it's going to reduce that oxidative stress. It's going to also inhibit inflammation. We're going to speed along here. And um, it is going to help with blocking the inflammation in both the lungs and throughout the entire body. I mean, it's one of the things that I like using NAC4 is because most people are suffering from a, a level of inflammation in their body that is low-lying but chronic. And so that's why it's like when you take something like a virus and somebody who's already basically sick gets sick from the virus, they have huge problems. So NEC protects against blood clots. This is very interesting, right? Because this is another thing we've been hearing quite a bit. You get COVID and what can happen? Blood clots in the lungs. I mean, I have a patient that literally just got riddled with blood clots. Um, you also see a lot of blood clots coming from the shots themselves. I recently did a video on this. So importantly, NAC may also protect against other problems associated with COVID-19, including the hypercoagulation that can result in a stroke or blood clots that impair the ability to exchange oxygen in the lungs. So basically, if we you know try to comprehend what this means, not only can you take this to help avoid the virus and influenza, but you also can take it during and after in order to help with all the negative effects that come from it. One of the things that I recently posted on my Instagram account is that I have seen from people who have gotten COVID-19, which is pretty much everybody at this point, right? One of the things that is happening is that if they had a problem, whatever problem that is, it's exacerbated. So there was this research article showing that like, COVID-19 was making Alzheimer's and dementia and inflammatory problems in the brain worse. And my point was, it's like, well, it's not that it actually just amplifies dementia. What it is doing, and I've seen this with my patients across the board and even you know with uh, my own personal health, is that if you had an inflammatory problem at one area in the body, it basically just throws that into a spiral it amplifies that inflammation. So if somebody has brain inflammation, boom, brain inflammation's worse. If you have gut inflammation, boom, gut inflammation's worse. If you have arthritis throughout your body, all of a sudden your arthritis pain just stepped up to a new level, right? And so this is what I see con continuously. However, with NAC, you can be taking this and supporting the lowering of inflammation for the long haul, right? 
This is why it, uh, from, from the source that I recommended for NAC is having you use right around like 1.2 grams per day, right? Really like uh, it's a good dose in order to help lower inflammation and it shows that it works. And so you can also protect yourself, right? You don't want to get blood clots. That's no fun. So as we go down here, um, NAC helps improve a variety of lung related problems. Now this is important. I had someone I was working with the other day, horrible lung issues from post COVID, you know, getting sick and everything like to the point of lung transplant is on the table. And it's very interesting because, you know, I, I was frustrated with this individual because I had recommended NAC to them almost two years ago when COVID first came in and was a thing and didn't do anything about it because the individual already had lung issues. Didn't do anything about it. Didn't do anything about it. Went through the whole thing, got COVID, severe lung issues. And now here I am still recommending NAC. So let's take a look at some of the lung issues that NAC helps with. 2018, they found that it reduces oxidative and inflammatory damage in patients with acquired pneumonia. Um, another study found that it improves post-operative lung function in patients undergoing liver transplant. Um, 2017, they found that um, it helps with uh, people who are suffering from ARDS. 2007, they found that NAC helps increase intracellular glutathione and extracellular thiol molecules, which is basically improving antioxidant function throughout the body, which we talked about the powers of glutathione, but glutathione is expensive, remember, so we use NAC to boost it up. In 94, they found that NAC enhances recovery from acute lung injury, okay? That sounds like something COVID-19 does, right? Acute lung injury, absolutely. Significantly repressing patients' lung injury score during the first 10 days of the treatment and significantly reducing the need for ventilation. After three days of treatment, only 17% of those receiving NAC needed ventilation compared to the 48% in the placebo group. That's huge. NEC is also well known for a mucolytic, okay? This means that if you have mil mucus built up in the lungs and in the throat and you can't get it up, it helps break that up so you can actually clear mucus out of the airways, especially with cystic fibrosis patients. Some studies also suggest that NEC can help reduce symptoms of COPD and prevent exacerbation of the condition, okay? And then the article goes on to say, according to this journal, the standard of care should include NAC, okay? So I'm not gonna fight over what care should be for people um, because I think that gets nowhere. What I'm going to say to you is that if you want to work on prevention, supporting reducing inflammation, supporting your lung health, supporting uh, uh, not getting sick from the influenza, supporting your body in every way, boosting up that amazing, powerful antioxidant glutathione. If you want to get all those benefits, just look to NAC, link in the description. I think it's very, very powerful. And I think it's something that anybody and everybody can take throughout, especially the seasons of the year when a lot of people are sick. We see influenza just spiking like crazy right now. We see, you know, people saying, Omicron, it's everybody's getting it. Everybody will get it and everybody is getting it. NAC, it's a great, simple approach to improving your health. And it's inexpensive and it offers a tremendous amount of benefits. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next. And if you really like this one, I think you'll like this video over here next.